What's going on guys? Got another tutorial for you guys that I'm gonna... Uh, give me one second. There you go. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how I did all that in Final Cut Pro 10. Move over, move over, man. So just before I show you guys how to shoot and edit this, I wanna shout out Storyblocks for sponsoring the video. Now, if you guys have been on my channel for a while, you guys know how much I use Storyblocks assets in a lot of my edits and tutorials. So throughout this tutorial, you'll be seeing a lot of transition pieces and animated effects just popping up here and there. And all the assets that you'll be seeing in this video are from Storyblocks. Now you can download and use as much of these as you want. With Storyblocks, it's unlimited all access plan. And the cool thing is you can also use these for your commercial projects. So make sure to try them out. You'll never know what type of assets you'll find on there that you can use for your own projects. I'll make sure to leave a link to Storyblocks in the description down below. So now we're going to place these toys around the living room. So the main thing is we don't want them to overlap with uh, the main subject, so the main subject in the video is going to be me. So it actually wasn't too difficult to shoot this piece. Everything was done using a tripod, one camera, an iPad, which you don't really need to use, you can just use your smartphone, and just some toys and items to place around the room. Use one of these books. Now you want to make sure that the subject doesn't overlap with all the items that you place around the room. So in this example, I had myself right in the middle while I had the other items all around me. And as you can tell here, nothing was overlapping. So in the first scene, it will be me holding the iPad, looking around at all the items. In the scene, I'll actually act it all out, pretending that each item is slowly disappearing as I click on them on the iPad. And in the next scene, you'll just need to place the toys around the room and get a quick 5 second shot of it. Again, remember to place them so that they are not overlapping with each other and the subject. And in the very last scene, just keep the camera rolling for another few seconds but without any items in place. Make sure not to move the camera and tripod at all. These clips need to be shot at the exact same spot. So these are the three clips that we'll be working on today. First drag the clip with no items on your project timeline. With that clip selected, click on the retiming options tool, then select hold. Since I know the clip of me holding the iPad and doing all the actions is about 8 seconds long, I will resize and trim this clip so that it is the exact same length. Next drag the clip with the toys on top of the first clip. You will also need to highlight and select hold under the retiming options tool for this clip and then resize it to match the bottom scene. Now it's time to animate the toys. Look for the draw mask tool and drag it on the top clip. We're going to focus on the fuzzy orange chair first since it's the first item that I look at in the video. Zoom into it so we can better place the key points around it. Start placing the key points around the chair. So the more accurate and precise you are with the placement, the better it'll turn out. Zoom back out when you're done. So I wanted the item to slightly raise up and increase in size. I did this by changing the scale size in the Transform Inspector tab, then readjusted the position as well. Now to make the item shake, you're going to need the earthquake effect from the effects tab and then drag that on top of it. I didn't want it to shake too much so I just changed the amount to about 5 and layers to 1. Play around with these numbers until you're happy with how it looks. I found this circle with the X in the middle on Google and just used that to place on top of the clip. Just resize it, change the position to wherever you like and change the duration size to match it as well. Also add the earthquake effect to it to add some light shade to the clip. Now that you're done all that, 
you'll need to repeat the steps for every item you have in your scene. So since I had 4 items, I had to do this step 4 times. So to quickly show you again, drag the toy clip on top, change to hold, resize it, and place the draw mask tool on top of it. So exact same steps as the first one. Once you're done all that, highlight all the clips, right click, and create a new compound clip. Now find a clip of you doing your actions and place it underneath it. To reveal yourself in a shot, we're going to need to add the draw mask tool on the top clip. So drag that on top, then start placing key points around the items, but make sure not to overlap with anything. Click on Invert Mask. Once you're done that, add a bit of feathering to smooth out the edges. Do this only if needed. Now we just need the items to disappear and match the timing with the tap on the iPad. Move frame by frame until you get to the first tap on the screen. Once you found it, double click on the compound clip. You'll see that the cursor is already placed at the spot you need it at to match the tap on the iPad. Since I was looking to my right, we'll start with the chair first. Look for that clip and then highlight it, but leave the cursor at the exact same spot it was at. Place a keyframe under position and scale all. Then move about 2 frames over with the right arrow key. Now change the scale size to 0. You'll also notice that the position moved. You just need to change the X and Y axis number until it is around the same spot it was originally in. Now you also just need to trim the X button above it as well to match it disappearing. Just cut it right around the same time it disappears. Now go back to your main clip by pressing this button here. You need to do the exact same thing with the other items to make them disappear. So again, to quickly go over this, Go frame by frame until the next tap on the iPad. Double click the top clip, find the clip that you're working on, add keyframes to position and scale all, move two frames over, change scale size to zero, fix X and Y position, and then cut off the X button clip to match the bottom one. So continue doing this if you have more items to animate. Find a clip where it's just the toys in the scene and place that in front of the first clip. Load the movement of you starting up the process right below it. All you really need to do is line up the tap of the screen so that it is closer to the end of the clip. Then place a draw mask tool on the top clip and reveal yourself in the shot without overlapping with other items. Click Invert Mask and add some feathering as well. I also found these tap, click, and pop up sounds on Storyblocks that sound something like you'd hear from a smartphone and iPad. It definitely added a lot to the effects, so I highly suggest you add something similar to these as well. Color grade it afterwards to make the edit pop out even more. Now it should look something like this. So thank you guys for watching and again don't forget to check out Storyblocks. You just never know what type of stuff you'll find on there for your project. So I'll make sure to leave a link in the description down below. It's my time in my prime. This the prime time. Pretty content. Are you content? No nonsense. Just to go get a